guys, I found a fella who's offering us all a ride. Come on and hop in my creepy van. Whoa, 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 oh, no, 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 Tally, no. Away, Thank you very away. much, sir. Eh, probably a good decision. <laughs> If the artist I commissioned is watching this, can you at least update me on the drawings already? It's been half a year. I'm not mad at you, I'm just wondering where you are. These are the top five best or worst modern cartoons, volume nine, in no particular order. It's juice and jam time. <laughs> But first, this video is sponsored by Verve, VRV, a service offering cartoons, movies, original shows, and anime, subbed and dubbed. You got stuff from Crunchyroll, Rooster Teeth, and more. Click the links below or go to vrv.co slash rebeltaxi for a 30-day ad-free trial of Verve Premium. Not only do you have Nick Splat, but also Boomerang, old and new stuff like Looney Tunes, Scooby-Doo, Banicola, Courage, and more. All that, along with, but not limited to, ad-free content first access to new stuff and being able to sync your videos to your iOS or Android to watch offline later. Again, click the links below or go to vrv.co slash rebeltaxi for a 30-day ad-free trial of Verve Premium. Stupid dog! You made me look bad! Alright, brand new camper babies! If you thought you were going to a normal summer camp with canoeing and potholder making, you were sorely mistaken. This is a magical camp, and you can do whatever you want here. So when I first watched the pilot to Summer Camp Island, it looked like the biggest vegan dieting, mocha drinking, vinyl collecting, Polaroid snapping, longboard holding, vice media reading, Wes Sanderson watching, pedo mustache grooming, music festival crashing, Bernie Sanders staggering, Mumford and Sons listening, glasses without lenses wearing, over the garden wall gallivanting, not all who wander are lost quoting hipster as bullshit. You'd assume this was a crudely drawn preschool show, except it's on Cartoon Network. I vented my distaste for the show online and got these messages. Suck dick, pan pizza, summer camp island hater, douchebag, douchebag, you're an idiot. Low IQ motherfucker, go to hell, summer camp island hater, dick dick. Oh man, please. Don't kill me. That was scary, but I will not be intimidated by criminal threats. I'm still reviewing Summer Camp Island, a cartoon about a group of kids who expected a normal stay at this camp, but soon find it to be in control by witches who use magic to turn things alive and cause all sorts of wacky antics. It's a crudely drawn place that resembles an urban outfitters. I will say it looks much better than the pilot. Y you know what? Stops now, Marshmallow. <gasps> <gasps> Whoa, dude. Sorry. Summer Camp Island is stimulus overload as everything is alive and things are just happening. Makes sense, the creator worked on Adventure Time prior. I don't want to be those guys that say, this show feels like I'm on drugs, but with all the stuff going on on screen, it's distracting to follow, like, what is happening? Yeah, it's a kid show, but I feel a sinister side behind its sincerity. It's ambiguously weird and far more off-putting than anything blatantly weird on Adult Swim. You know what I mean? When you watch something weird on Adult Swim, you know it was intended to be weird. But if you saw the same thing on, let's say, a VHS tape you found in the street, you'd be asking, is this supposed to be creepy or is it genuine? Sorry, Shark. What's wrong, honey? No one in this cartoon seems to understand personal space. Everything is alive, including the kids' pajamas. These kids are 14, you know, freshmen in high school, but they talk like five-year-olds. It doesn't seem right. When you look at the creator Julia Potts' previous work, you'll see she's made some creepy animations before. So the idea to make Summer Camp Violin look like a sweet show and have this creepy undertone was likely intentional. That's why I personally titled the show Bad Touch Island. You want to help me clean out the unicorn stable? I think you'll find it enlightening. Are you saying what I'm looking for is in the unicorn stables? I don't know. Am I? Call the police! Call the police! Horrible! Horrible! Worse than Friday the 13th Part 2! In a way, I recommend Summer Camp Island more so as a simulated acid trip. It just feels too overwhelming for me, and maybe others feel the same. The channel aired every episode in a row for two days straight. It aired a couple more times, and now it's completely gone from the schedule. I guess Cartoon Network wanted to try a more sensitive type of show. But what's currently their biggest shows are Teen Titans Go, Gumball, and Total Drama Rama. Snarky self aware shows with sadistic humor. I guess even kids thought this was lame. 
You're right, Hedgehog. Summer camp is gonna be awesome. Nine can be dangerous. Oh, see? He gets me. Oh, no. An immediate landscape with superhero cinematic universes, CG that can do anything, and all the anime you want online, action cartoons aren't as big of a draw anymore. To most people, a giant robot is more impressive in live action than animated. Action cartoons are still here, but not as much. Among the few is Big Hero 6 the series, based on a Disney movie I thought was okay. It was a by-the-numbers superhero origin slash Iron Giant story that had a good dynamic but was held back by too many characters. I felt it would have worked better as a team TV series to flesh out all six of these heroes, and I was right. I really love Big Hero 6 the series. You're probably wondering if this can fill the void of Teen Titans. Close, it's more like Kim Possible as the KP creators are producing this. Big Hero balances between slice of life, crime fighting, and a lot of comedic villains, but when it has to, there are more serious threats and plot lines. Even that fluttery music score that tormented the Kim Possible versus here. <laughs> And then I made a totally pre-planned escape by getting hit by a bus. Yeah, that's smooth. So things are going pretty great. I bet the one little hiccup is I can't really control my mutated body. Here, watch me try to grab that spoon. The show gives me a cozy feeling. I really miss the teen by day, hero by night plot lines. To draw another KP comparison, you got some fun villains, mostly based on Japanese culture. Kaijus, game show hosts, a bumbling slime creature, which was my favorite, and this sushi chef who gets pissed when you don't eat her sushi properly. <gasps> It's got great character dynamics all around, but the big setback is the wildly inconsistent animation. Some shots resemble a web cartoon, while others are the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe for season two, Disney will up the animation like they did for Star Versus. If you miss cartoons with teenagers hanging out and fighting crime, Big Hero 6 is what you need. Even voice actor Kari Payton is here. What is this, the third teenage superhero group he's a part of? I ain't complaining, I find that really funny. Graphene blades. Thinner than paper, but stronger than steel. This tech is cutting edge. No pun intended. <laughs> okay, okay, pun intended. Capture those specimens! Cowabunga! As someone who managed to grow up with every iteration of the Ninja Turtles, I just want to say this shit's the fucking tits, bitch, rise of the TMNT. It's as if the turtles had been mutated with Motor City and Kill a Kill. There's insane action and the turtles are all naked. It's perfect and exactly like those shows, except not at all. The episodes are short 11 minute Monster of the Week stories without much continuity, which is all TMNT needs to be, really. That late night rubber monster movie action is fun enough on its own. Not every reboot needs to have a grand storyline, especially when this is like the 50th reboot. Seriously, this premiered just one year after the cancellation of the previous cartoon. How about a break? As an 11 minute show, I was worried the story pacing and action would be too fast to follow. This flashy style in other shows I feel is wasteful. Like, yeah, at school you can draw a bunch of dynamic stuff, but it's meaningless when I can't read what's going on. That issue is there in the intro where I wish it was a bit slower to take in how slick it is, but the episodes themselves get the pacing down and have me laughing at all the banter. If I had a cartoon, I feel this sharp edge style is how I'd want it to look. It's awesome. <laughs> Weapons to beat you? I got my rare skills! <laughs> The turtles are now different species, which is good to tell them apart visually, but writing-wise, I don't feel they're distinct enough from one another. Meanwhile, their master splinter is just a drunk slob rather than a mystical sensei, and their arch enemy, the Shredder, has yet to appear, but some Foot Clan members have. I'm expecting them to do what many post-2010 cartoons are doing, start out episodic and maybe later introduce plot lines and the Shredder himself. I'd love to see them expand the characters more, but for now, we have so many TMT reboots, I'm fine with basic Monster of the Week spectacle. It's a lot of fun. So, you guys from Jersey?
back to He-Man. Destroy him! Uh, here, catch, brother. Thanks, sis. I know most of the outrage is just trolling, but there are people who are unironically pissed. Getting mad at a bad reboot of an 80s cartoon is like getting mad at telemarketer you got today wasn't as good as the one from 30 years ago. At least with 90s cartoons, they were, you know, pitched by actual cartoonists who later got their stuff turned into marketing bullshit. 80s cartoons were marketing bullshit from the start being pitched by toy makers, especially She-Ra. A spinoff about He-Man's supposed long lost sister on her own adventures for the girl demographic. That's one first suit away from being a Sonic OC's origin story. People are mad about this new Netflix reboot for... I don't know, it's different, therefore bad. The anime look, missing characters, outfits not being as revealing, changing the race of characters, giving people pastel hair, changing body types, more juvenile humor, going for current trends. Otaku? Otaku? Oh, silly me, these are images of the OG Teen Titans. Don't worry, comic book fans love that show when it first came out. <laughs> Today's bullshit, tomorrow's nostalgia. Now, it's okay to criticize these shows, but not when the complaints are, it's different, so it's bad. My main issue with reboots like Shaolin Chronicles and the 2016 Powerpuff Girls is that they weren't different enough to be their own continuity. They act like a continuation, yet change too much around, which would be fine, but they don't establish who these characters are for a new generation. It assumes kids today watch the previous show made before they were born. It alienates everyone. She-Ra is straight up its own thing and will be reviewed as such, regardless of changes. If changes were bad, the following stories are complete bastardizations. Anyway, Netflix's She-Ra is a warrior princess who must journey with her friends to unite other princesses so they may fight a war against evil. What catches my eye are the designs. I like them, although there's this popsicle stick shaped blush on everyone's nose, but I got used to it. What I couldn't get used to was the animation. Certain poses and action sequences meant to be more dynamic felt a bit stiff, while the pacing was abrupt here and there. But midway through season one, they seem to have fixed those issues as the plot really kicks in. We go on three. Ready? One. Four! I said on three. It gets hammy and typical with the friendship forever messages, but I am deep into the character drama like, ooh, girl, don't trust that bitch. Shit's a fucking soap opera, I love it. It managed to get me a bit too emotionally invested into the rivalry of She-Ra and her childhood friend slash villain, Katra. <laughs> wow. You know, the tiara actually gets stupider the more I look at it. Katra, how did you find me? <gasps> did you think it would be that easy to escape the horde? I mean, I always knew you were kind of dumb, but come on. Put another cat girl on the list, cause she is fine and dandy. I'm curious, what does Katra look like in the old series again? Oh. Never mind. Yeah, I like these better. It's okay to prefer the old style, but I see people mad about these new body types. In a universe of warriors, I can see how a pudgy hero can be strange, but hear me out. The problem with the 80s cartoon is that it duplicated the same bodies to appease the toy molds they're meant to sell. It's very restricting to the art of character design. The new varied body types reflect their abilities. Melee and weapon users are buff or trim, while magic users are chubby. The concept of hero is more than physical strength. If I could shoot lasers out my ass, I'm set for life. What, is using the bow flex gonna make me shoot bigger lasers? Not falling for that one again. Think about this. He-Man was a reflection on 80s action heroes, your Schwarzeneggers, Lundgren, Stallones. But in the 90s, we started getting more schlubby or scrawny action stars like Willis and Keanu. They were the everyman audiences could relate to. It still applies today, but there's always room for your Dwayne Johnsons. The same is happening to the action cartoons. Viewers in the 80s and 90s looked up to these muscular adults, but around the 2000s, it was more popular for the kids and teens to see themselves as the hero. Even Superman and Spider-Man got Got aged down for their 2000s outing. Point is, now anyone can be the hero. You know what? These claws need a manicure. Oh god. If we're going by returning characters, She-Ra's twin brother He-Man is not here, while Cal only shows up as a little plush toy. 
He was the cowardly mascot character that every 80s cartoon had, like Orko and Snarf. Snarf was a talking cat in the 80s Thundercats, but in the 2011 reboot he just meowed. They should have done the same for Cal, had him only chirp and float around like the turd he is, but eh, not like he was a value. It doesn't look so great to me. <laughs> Most perceptive of you, friend Cringer. With a bit of polish, Shira is a few steps away from me calling it great. As is, it's pretty good. I guess the biggest difference about the new Shira compared to the old is that the new one is actually enjoyable. That's my girl. <laughs> this ain't nothing like back home, Dad. Look around you. Welcome to Big City. Nita. Dang. Oh boy. Now, if you're tired of all the storylines and magical stuff, I got a simple, cozy show for you. Big City Greens, give me the big titty creams. It's like the Beverly Hillbillies where a family of country folk experience life in the city. Trampoline parks, food trucks, smartphones, hipsters. It's fake and stereotypical. Yeah, and kind of offensive. At face value, it covers the same topics as We Bear Bears, except the bears mostly understand modern stuff while the greens are fish out of water. Each show is different enough through their dynamics. When I reviewed We Bear Bears, I was worried it'll get dated like smartphones and cartoons used to bug me. But now, I don't mind it. It's not like cell phones are going away anytime soon. Why not let cartoons mock stuff that's modern. Yeah, things like these hoverboards aren't as popular as they were around 2015, but as its own thing, it's still funny to see these nerds rely on such a device. What are we waiting for? Actually, my sunscreen's wearing off. Uh, yeah, my mega anime torrent just finished downloading, so... Whatever! We'll finish it tomorrow at dawn! See you then, loser! <laughs> <laughs> as long as a joke or story using these elements can stand on its own and it's not just, look, we're trendy, it should not matter if it's topical. The style and humor is very Gravity Falls. Sometimes it's sweet, other times I don't know what to say. You have the usual family dynamic of a troublemaking boy, a dad trying his best, a creepy girl whose concept art is very concerning, and a grandma who don't give up. Fuck! I love her. <laughs> She's trying to play! Yeah, I'm trying to drown ya! And Irwin shows up for some reason. That's karma after Billy and Mandy stole Dexter. And no, I have no idea why everyone is neon skinned. There's not much else to say, I just love urban cartoons. And it's a modern take on a basic premise. For pure simplicity, Big City Greens is something I'll watch whenever it's on. Darn right! Now let's go get that dirt! Yeah! Yo, great! It's not possible! This Saturday, Toonami's giving you some extra manpower. Put some muscle into it! Tear into a he man -a -thon. You shall be transformed into a great warrior. A baker's dozen of He-Man. Team classic episodes. This Saturday from 4.30 to 11 p.m. Let's get physical. Good form. Only to mommy. Learn to yo-yo right in your own home from champion Tom Park.